Hello and you're very welcome to the Chemac Podcast. I'm John Gwan. Of course, the podcast brought to you by orgaret.com. Use the code Chemac Podcast to get 15% off on their website. And today I'm joined by well renowned GA coach Keelan Malanoff to preview this weekend's Ulster Senior Football Championship game against Armagh in Breton Park this Saturday at half six. So, really looking f- uh, forward to chatting to Keelan uh, tonight. Obviously, Championship time, it gets the blood going, it gets the mood raised. And Keelan, you're a happy man this week, no doubt. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, just, uh, can't wait to hopefully get into town early and to sample the atmosphere. I think Cavan, Cavan Town will be, will be busy, and uh, please God, lots of businesses can get a good twist out of it. I just see a lot of, lot of on Twitter there the, the, all the, the traffic, the traffic plan as well in place. Anyway, it's well being put out, so I intend to get in nice and early. Anyway, the traffic will not concern me. <laughs> Absolutely. Likewise, my man. Likewise, and we will soak up the atmosphere. I suppose. How has life been this year thus far? So we've done the podcast, uh, our first podcast, obviously back in December there, and obviously you said you're taking it easy this year. I suppose. How's the I suppose detox been? So obviously you're doing a bit of underage coaching, but if you get me, yeah, uh, I, I, it's a question that I'm asked regularly. Uh, are you missing it? I'd say. Before this week, I would have said, geez, absolutely not, because the weather has been atrocious. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I was out cutting the grass there on Tuesday evening, and normally you'd be packing up the car and getting ready to head off to a training session somewhere. And there's a little bit of a feeling there that you wouldn't you wouldn't mind heading heading to a field with a a, a, a team. But no, look at happy enough and doing doing me a little bit of uh, underage here in the club and the bridge, and um, very happy to be doing that to be given a bit. Given a bit back, but um, I haven't. Uh, with all my best laid plans, I had intended to go and see lots of lots of league games and stuff, and I haven't I haven't been able to see one. Now, granted, I, I was away for a week's holidays, but um, I intend to now. Hopefully, uh, hopefully in the next uh, three or four four or five rounds of the All County Football League to go and watch a couple of different divisions and and uh, sample it a wee a wee bit more. Mm. I suppose, okay, what I suppose major differences maybe have you seen in your week? Obviously, your work is busy and obviously family life, but obviously not being involved in the team. So what's the main uh, big differences for you, do you feel? I'll be completely honest with you. It's it's the support, the support that you have around you. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I suppose one of the reasons why I haven't gotten been able to or gone to too many of the league games is because, well, Lisa's is still playing and obviously Cara's, Cara's kicking as well. So... Um, just to be more about the house and stuff like that. It's stuff that it's bedtimes, it's bad times, it's things that you don't see. Um, house is busy from six o'clock, six o'clock on to eight o'clock, and there were times on certainly on on Tuesdays and Fridays that I would never have seen, or even Sunday mornings to be able to, you know, get up and get them get them ready for for the day and a bit of breakfast and just to laze about with them a little bit more. But um, yeah, it's been nice. Uh, hopefully now we'll we get a bit of spell of weather. We were away for a week there out in Spain, so um, we had good crack. Yeah, like in previous holidays to Spain, we'd always go at the at the at the midterm break. But I'd always be on the phone. I'd be on the phone. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, there'd be a game on, so I'd be I'd be on the phone. I'd be I'd be wired up for an hour that I'd be talking to somebody on the sideline of what's happening. And mm. so it was great to just go away and just completely switch off. But. The, the mm. biggest thing is just to be more, I guess, appreciative of, you know, what's at home um, when you're away training teams and stuff like that. So mm. um, it's been nice to it's been nice to help out and a little bit more and to allow Lisa to go off and do her training and to do her playing and stuff. So it's good mm. to go and to see her play as well, as well as mm. Cara. It's been nice. Hmm. Yeah, downtime is key, Kill. I suppose obviously the Cavan League, uh, football league club games have started in earnest, and obviously uh, the weather has just been so so bad in the last month or so. So a lot of games obviously have been pulled. But have you any kind of maybe made great match reports or looking at the Celt? Have any kind of match reports or results kind of stood out for your like I suppose league standings? No, no. To be honest, I, you know, I'd say a lot of teams. You no, know, I suppose teams in Division Division Three and Division Two, be it if they're junior or intermediate, in order for them to be, I guess, progression in their respective championships, they would be targeting, you know, promotion in their in their leagues to get up to Division 2 or, you know, to get up to Division 1. Um, so f- from a Division 1 point of view, um, you see there, Balanya lost, lost, lost a couple and they've, and they've, and they've had a couple of very good results 
as well. Um, so teams generally in Division One will be looking to get their four or five wins out of the way and then just start concentrating on, on, on championship. You know, there's not too many teams in Division One that would be targeting a Division One title. If it happens, great. Um, but for the most part, they're just the one to get their five or six wins, be safe, and then after that, then after then start knuckling down for championship. Um, you know, whenever that may come, hopefully. Um I think Cavan uh, as a whole, I think it could be a, a long year just yet. So the county players the county players might be going back to their clubs just yet for a while. Obviously, yeah. with the under twenties being knocked out, it's nice to see uh, a lot of younger players get, being able to go back and and um, play with their clubs and stuff like that. So um, yeah. that would be a welcome boost to a lot of a lot of teams. I know from you know from Killigarry to have Daryl Lovett available, to have Kevin available. Um, yeah. I know I know Mark is still injured, but he shouldn't be too far away from it. Um, young Keen Keeney as well. So that'll. You know, it's it's good for these younger players to get blooded in in Division One, in Division One uh, league games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and it's great to see the club football back and lads are enjoying the return to play. I suppose, obviously, after a serious month of hard training, no doubt. And I suppose we can touch on to the Cavan end of things. Obviously, Keelan League champions in Division Three. Obviously, getting the over the line against Fermanagh Crow Park a few weeks ago. You know, ju- judging Cavan's league form, it was pretty impressive. Obviously, getting bet by uh, Fermanagh and Antrim, obviously, he's probably surprised the to a degree. But overall, not a bad league campaign. No, no, no. Uh, uh, you know, I think when we spoke the last time, you know, you'd ask, what would you think for next year? I would have just thought the same. Like Mickey would have wanted the league to start and for it to be over and for them to be promoted um, and come out of it unscathed. I, t- I believe they've done that. Um, and they've, uh, what I really like about it is they've blooded, they've blooded some players. Um, you know, young Carlin there from Cucullins, he's a, he's a Rolls Royce. Um, Tiernan Madden has slotted into that half back line. It's like he's been there for the last lucky years. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brandon Boylan, Brandon Boylan as well has been impressive. The guys has took their chances like Ryan O'Neill from Kildallan. He's around the panel there for three or four years and, and maybe has struggled to get his chance. He got his chance this year and he took it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see heading in towards the weekend you know, team selections and where these where these young players um fit in or lads that has got their got their chances in the league. But look at Mickey and his backroom team and the players um, should be very happy with, with a, a successful uh, league campaign, getting the promotion and that's where that's where they need to be is in division two and at the top end of it. Please God next year looking for to go up to division one. Yeah, I suppose obviously like throughout the league we, we did see some really high scores and I suppose like from the Cavan and the things you're looking at maybe some of the results and obviously b- being live at the games it's really good to see Cavan be, be putting teams to the sword and I think I remember that down game very fondly like it just really went hammer and tong even in the second half and I suppose the Cavan would be a team of old maybe you're scraping one or two point wins but they really put the foot down on the throat and I suppose just played really good football and played to their strengths. Absolutely and I, I think huge credit has to come from um, their new man there uh, their coach from Mayo Burke. James Burke, um, yeah. He's he's uh, he seems to have have brought in this, uh, you know, a, a, a more of a kick in ethos, a more of a, a quick ball, especially transition from from back to front, um, a hell of a lot quicker, and um, you know, kind of getting away from the you know slow methodical, you know, lateral hand pass and reverse hand passing type game everything seems to be a little more direct streamlined and that suits our forwards that suits the likes of Paddy Lynch and, and Garod if if both of them are inside or Ryan O'Neill if he's inside because the last thing they want to see is is slow build up coming up the field and over and back because it's very hard and tiresome for them inside to be timing their runs and they might have to make three or four or five, six runs before they can actually get on the ball but there really seems to be an impetus put on on Quick ball, quick direct ball inside, and um, I think that'll be a huge uh, uh, key to this game uh, at the weekend. Mm, absolutely, and I suppose even in the I suppose the league final, maybe it was a quite a slow start from Cavan, and obviously the, whatever probably was said at half time, they really utilised their strengths and powers, and it was a really good kind of scoring display in the second half, Keelan. But I suppose like, like reflecting on the league final, like you're happy enough with maybe Cavan's output in the second half, maybe to a degree. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at like I mean these games are they're not simple either, like you know, and you're yeah. not coming up against a, a dummy of a team either, like um for men are are well coached, they're well set up, um, and they're set up to frustrate teams and to and to you know to upset the thing and keep it keep it to a tight game and not allow Cavan to play an expansive game. Um so you know, it doesn't really you know, whatever was said was said. I don't ever believe these things are ever down to one motivational speech or anything like that. I, I would think the players probably in their leadership groups got together and go, this it's not good enough and we have to be better. And they were clinical in the second half. They were they were really set up for it. Um so look at you can only ever beat the team that's put in front of you and that team is always going to try and set up to counteract your your strengths. So uh the second half, yes. Well, it's a time to reset. I, I would, I would say it was, it was more the players maybe that just sort of, you know, let's go out and let's go out and win this because, you know, there's no point in go, going to Crow Park and being in that position um, if you're not going to win. Like promotion is great, but when there's a chance of silver, where you go and grab it with both hands. Obviously, some of the players that stood out throughout the I suppose league campaign, Keelan, like the, just Ray Gallagher, the time that's Ray Gallagher, like he, still going strong. Obviously, like he, I think he's been on the calf and knocking around the calf panel since about 2007. He's obviously captain, he's the leader of the team and kicked some vital scores even in the league final and kept us kept us in it and I suppose leading from the front. Yeah, and you wouldn't expect that more from Raymond. Um, he's excellent. Um, all the things you, you, you said there, he's he's a leader. He's a leader. The guys look to him, and when the pressure's on, that's where Raymond um, steps up. Um, his 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 awareness is 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 excellent. Um, I think it's a little bit underrated how much he organises. You know, his backs around him a little bit, um, yeah. especially on opposition uh, kickouts and stuff like that. He's encouraging the press. He's encouraging the push up and. Um, He's excellent, but the guys do look to him. Um, you know, some might argue, have we nobody that can that can kick these frees over? Can we no forwards and stuff like that? Mm. For me, I see no issue with it. If 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 he's our best man on a dead ball, then he's he's the man to kick. And I think and you know, realistically, he is an outfield player. Like oh, he is. In, in a previous life, well, a bit oh, yeah. like too. Like yeah, 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 yeah. He is. He is. He is. Uh, he knows his stuff. Um, so. I, I, and again, I think that's going to be uh, a, 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 an element of the game at the weekend. Raymond Galligan versus Ethan Rafferty. Mm. Like, I mean, Raymond isn't going to do what Ethan Rafferty does, comes up the field and takes no. a heap of chances and stuff like that. But um, I fancy Raymond to, to outscore Ethan Rafferty at the weekend, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I suppose obviously Darren McFeedy kind of coming into the fold, like uh, probably by a mile, probably overall from Division One, Two, Three, Four. He was probably one of the standout players in the whole yeah. league campaign as a whole, and like, you know what mm. position, even in the league final, Keelan, like McFeedy maybe like he, he scored one or two nice scores, but even the leadership when he's on the field, we're just we're automatically a better team when he's on the field. Yeah, 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 and that's that's a true testament. To, you know, uh, that's what a leader does. He makes everyone around him better, and Dara is just one of these players that he's, you know, he's as honest as the day is long. Rarely do you see Dara making a, a mistake on the ball or off the ball. He's always there. He's always willing. And when Cavan needs him, same with Kieran Nahala. When Cavan yeah, needs yeah. him, they're there. They're there. Yeah. Uh-huh. And again, like I mean, I think Kieran Nahala is having some year this year. That that yes. half that half back line. Um, it's you know, exceptional. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, seeing the pair of boys in in games that they remind me of. There was a, a TV show years ago. Carol was watching a lot of weeks ago. The Mighty Ducks, and there's okay. two Hardy boys there. They're called the Bash Brothers, and that's what <laughs> that's what that's what that's what them two boys remind me of. Because yeah. I'd love to get the stats, and I know there's a stats man in there doing it, but I'd yeah. love to see how many turnovers Darren McVitty and Kieran Dahala. Um, created in that half back line um, during yeah. the league campaign, a huge, a huge reason why uh, Calvin got promoted. Yeah, yeah, they've just been exceptional. Obviously, Karen the Hall of Brady getting man match in the league final as well. Um, I suppose your thoughts on obviously midfield. Like, I suppose I've been vocal enough about maybe Calvin's midfield department in the past. Uh, Keelan, like, who would you be like? Obviously, Killy Clark and James were named midfield for the league final. But like, what would be your ideal midfield partnership? Like, do you feel that's an area of the field we need addressing? 
Yeah, look at James for me is in the middle of the field. Okay. Um, James definitely is in it. Team selection is going to be very interesting. Okay, um, yeah. Very interesting because yeah. you've 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 an off, like Conor Brady's performance coming off the bench. Um, you know, obviously, I don't know how well he has done in previous weeks in training, but yeah. Conor Brady has surely played himself damn near close to being on that starting fifteen. Do you play Conor Brady and James Smith? Then where do you fit in Killian Clark? Um, I think Killian Clark will probably start anyway. Um, where okay. he starts, full see, back maybe. No. Well, I'd say they won't move. I'd say Park Faulkner is going to be full back. I, I don't think you can move him. I, yeah. I fancy Park Faulkner to to take up. Where Where target. would you play? Like, if you were obviously over the cab name, like, where, where would you play Faulkner? Because obviously, like, he does like getting up the pitch a lot. Like, like, what do we? Like, where do we see the best of Park Faulkner? If you get me, I'd say number three. Number three. Okay. Okay. Number three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it's a different story in, in the club game. He can play he can play anywhere and obviously he'll have more of an influence. But I think, you know, yeah. for a stability point of view, I think you play Park Faulkner at, at number three. I think he's he's that's his that's his that's his place, that's his natural his natural habitat at inter county level. Yeah. Yeah, so, so in hindsight, or not in hindsight, reflection, your midfield partnership, you, you would be happy with Clark and Smith in the middle. You, you'd be happy enough with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Conor Brady, Conor Brady either. You see what yeah. Conor Brady can do either, whether whether you have a midfielder that's more of a, on the defensive the defensive side of it. That could be maybe a Conor Brady role and then that will allow, you know, McVitie and Kieran Holler to break from that half back line as well that Conor would be able to cover. But who knows? Like as I said, uh, from the onset, uh, I think the team selection and w- not just the selection, but where they actually line up um, will be very interesting. Um, and as you've seen before, there'll be it, it. It could well be the winning and winning and losing of a game. You know, when you, you need to get that right. Yeah, yeah, and even I hate the forward line. Like even like looking at the substitutions we have to bring on, and like the half forward line. That, in fairness, I have seen someone saying like it's probably Mickey Graham. He's, he he probably has the strongest panel in years. You really have to say like, and obviously the form of uh, Groba Karen will be crucial for this one on Saturday, Keelan. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Where does Garod? Where does Garod play? Um, if if I have my coaching hat on me, I have Garod in alongside Paddy Lynch in in front of the posts. Yeah. Uh, the twin towers. I think they can. I can. They can. They can cause outrageous trouble there against Armagh. Like Armagh likes to stream bodies forward, but they're not going to commit a whole pile of bodies going forward if Garrod and and Patrick is left close to the goal. Yeah, yeah, and obviously the form of, as you were saying, the aforementioned Ryan Rooney, but like Paddy Lynch and Ocean Brady inside. And Ocean Brady, in fairness to to his fullest credit, he had a great game against Fermanagh in that second half. He really kind of drove at the like the Fermanagh offense, and you've obviously skinned the game of coaching. Oshin Brady, like, how good of a talent can this man be? Oh, there's, there's, there's no ceiling for him. Okay. Um, he's physically strong. He's fast. He's a baller. He's not afraid of trying something new. But I think Oshin's game has improved immensely. Um, this past year, um, you know, where previous years when he was, uh, you know, that little bit younger, he was maybe trying to trying to try things out and. Uh, during the game that maybe wasn't on and taking unnecessary risks. Um, he's a real handful. He has the dummy he has, and he has an unbelievable boot on him. So yeah. I, if, if I was to be critical of Oshin, I'd be telling him to shoot a wee bit more. Um, mm. But he had an excellent, excellent uh, second half in that league game. There's no doubt about it. Um, but, you know, there's going to be, uh, there's headaches. There's headaches for that selection team, uh, yeah. of what to do. And then, there, you know, the other side of it is if you're not selected, whoever loses out, um, they're going to be hungry yeah. and uh, they're going to be willing to make an impact. And, and that subs bench for Calvin did make an impact in that league final when they came on with Conor Brady towards the end of the first half. Um, Conor Smith had an instant impact when he came on. Yeah, yeah. Um, Conor, you know, so... Uh, I, th- I actually think out of the, the youngsters who has been blooded this year, I, I do obviously think Niall Carlin will start. Carlin, um, yeah. I think you might see uh, you might see Brandon Boylan in there, um, okay. because he's tricky, he's flicky, he's fast, he's evasive, and the Armagh backs aren't going to like to be dealing with Brandon Boylan. Yeah, yeah. He's a baller. Yeah. He's he's an absolute baller, and uh, 
I I fancy to see him at uh, at some point, most definitely. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a lot of headaches for Mickey Graham definitely going into this one. I suppose like yep. the, game, the, the game itself, like Armagh obviously getting relegated from Division One, and it's you know it's hard to know how much maybe emphasis Kieran McGinley did put on the league campaign, but obviously there will be disappointing disappointment going down to Division Two. Like like you nearly would be thinking there's probably more pressure on Armagh than us this weekend. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I have it down here in front of me that that that, that I I certainly feel that I know Kieran McGinley and and. Uh, the Armagh camp has come out and say, well, they're not really targeting the Anglo Cell Cup, and you know they want they want to see down the line. I don't believe that for one second. Um, no, no. no. Kieran McGinley, has been in Armagh um, while he is an Armagh legend, yes, but he's been with that team now for I don't know what is it five six years. Um, more seven eight. More eight, seven eight yeah. years. <laughs> no, and no, no, no real success. You know, okay, getting a couple of promotions in the league, but. I mean, is that what people get excited about these days? Um, I think there's going to be pressure on them. Um, and I do believe Cavan has the stuff to, to, to do them. I believe our forwards can. I, I don't. I wouldn't. The reason why Armagh gets so defensive is I believe that their, their defenders aren't, aren't that good. On the flip side of that, Cavan's defenders are better. Cavan's yeah. defenders are far superior than the Armagh defenders. Yeah. Um, so I... I hope, I hope and pray that, that there's going to be a quick ball on the menu on Saturday evening and our, when our mark comes up the field that Cavan will be able to hit them on the break and uh, put them to the sword. And Cavan has showed that they're able to mix it. They're able to do it both ways. They're able to get yeah. back and work and leave one up top maybe. And, yeah. you know, so if it, like, I, I think a two or three point lead in this game could be a huge lead. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose obviously the, the first half we did put in against Fermanagh in the first, like in the league final, like it, like it definitely won't be you know acceptable this weekend. Like you you you, you will need to be all guns blazing essentially. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think it will be. I think it yeah, will yeah. be. Uh, yeah. You know, it's uh, you know championship championship brings out the best in, in in everyone, be it at club and inter county level. So you can best believe that these Cavan players will be chomping at the bit and ready to go. They know what's at stake too. They know that there's going to be a big Cavan support there, and and they're going to want to put on a show. And and uh, you know it's you know it's the thing they they have and they have changed the narrative based around Cavan maybe a soft underbelly down to the years. Right. Like you know, yes, they've gone down to the divisions, but they're coming back up, and yeah. that's shown you know character and resilience. And they're changing the narrative there. That okay, well we're not the we're not as bad as everyone. I think that they are, and you know, yeah. they're quite they're quite quite a few of the experts. But um, I really, I really like our chances um, at the weekend, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and obviously, uh, reading quotes, obviously, yeah, um, Mickey Graham on it says the day comes. It's never Dolan and Calvin, drama expecting Brefty men as they prepare for the visit of our man. I suppose, obviously, like if expectations of players and like like mansion supporters and everything. Mickey Graham, like it's it's a big job, but he, he has in his hands. But I suppose no better man just to kind of keep everything on an even key. Yeah, yeah, Mickey, not get too excited, anyway. Yeah. He'll yeah. not, not, not get too excited. Um, I'm sure he's enjoying the build up too, and and with his job, he's getting to meet lots of people up and down to the to the country, and they're they're chatting football to him, and that's when Mickey is probably at his happiest. But um, you know, obviously, I think the biggest thing is that their team selection, and once they have that over with them, they'll they'll they'll, they'll look forward to the job at hand. And I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a great evening in in Cavan. Yeah, fingers crossed, Keelan. I suppose, obviously, like previous meetings, obviously, 2014, Armagh got over the line against us. 2013, we did. 2016, we did. 2019, we did as well. And obviously, like it was replay, like in 2019. So, obviously, like we had the likes of uh, Key Mackey that day. We'd like to Darren McFeely to hit, obviously get us over the line. We've we've obviously no Key Mackey now, but we do have Darren McFeely. I suppose, obviously, like we will need everyone, but like, like referring like, to them games, it's always so tight between these two teams. And like home advantage will be key. It will be key. There'll be a huge Cavan support. Um, and also, what I said there, that you know a two or three point lead is going to be huge in this game um, for whichever way, because you know if it's Armagh that's chasing, then that's going to leave them more open, more open at the back. And I think it will be tight. Um, I just hope it's not 
you know, the way all these games are gone now has gone into these... Defensive. Yeah, yeah, defensive. We see there uh, from the weekend, like Monaghan mm-hmm. and, and Tyrone, mm-hmm. there was there was no fear there for that second half. It just, the whole thing opened up and both teams going for it. And, you know, sure, that's what, that's what spectators want to see. They don't want to see, you know, a million hand passes and lateral and reverse hand passes and players afraid to take a chance and, and playing yeah. within themselves a little bit. Um, yeah. As I said, I think Cavan has changed their style um, this year yeah. where they're going more kicking and stuff. So um, that's a positive and it's playing to their strengths. And I, I just think that these Armagh backs are, 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 are there to be got at. And yeah. the Cavan forward and midfielders and half-back line won't fear driving at them. And the reality of it is that's what they have to do. They have to drive at them. And if Armagh are sloppy and are not set up properly with, with defensively, they're going to foul. And if they foul, Raymond Galligan walk up the field 50 yards and stick it over the bar. Yeah, yeah. So it's killing, like the way Armagh have been playing, like I know obviously it was quite expressive football last year and they're kind of wondering where the football from last year is this year, obviously to a degree. And obviously with Kieran Donnelly being up there as well, like, it, like it's, it's big expansive attack of football. But this year, like the way Armagh kind of set up, like you know, what are you maybe expecting maybe the Cavan lads to counteract to do with that? Or like what way do you expect us to maybe play, I suppose? I think you're going to see. I think you're you're going to see an expansive game. Um, well, Armagh likes to pile players forward, and Ethan Rafferty coming up and trying to, you know, give little one twos and stuff like that. I'm not so sure if Ethan Rafferty will venture too far out from goal, especially if Garod and if Garod and Paddy Lynch is kept close. Um, he 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 won't like it. Uh, also, as well, you know, I go back to saying about. The resilience of our Cavan's half back line with mm-hmm. with Kieran Brady and and um, and Darren McVitie and Tiernan Madden in there, they've caused huge issues there for teams. Like teams won't be able, to, like Armagh won't run through Cavan. Mm-hmm. Um, again, obviously they have their forwards there, the Mernon and Grugan and Turbot and Reid O'Neill. We don't know if he plays. Um, Reid O'Neill, I'm really interested with that one. I haven't heard a zip on that. Surprise, surprise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, there'll be nothing. there be nothing leaked out of there. Um, no, no. I, I don't know. Look, um, I guess turn up on turn up on Saturday evening, you know. But you can be sure um, the Cavan management team is is planning that he he may make an appearance at some point. Um, yeah. But like we speak about the Cavan bench. Um, being able to 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 make an impact uh-huh. is also Armagh has a couple of couple of you know um, studs there on their bench like Ross McQuillan, he's yeah. a big athletic player. Um, yeah. Young McConville as well. They have players that will cause you trouble, but I genuinely McC- go on. Yeah, sorry, no. McConville doesn't seem to be getting the fair crack of the whip. No. I was t- talking. I was talking to two, a few Crossbow Glen boys, and I think McConville was kind of in and out, and he was kind of getting a bit frustrated with the lack of game time. So I don't know, like if he's a pirate on Saturday, like he could be a serious man to bring on. But I just don't think Geezer fancies him. Yeah, and probably not. And then I guess you don't know what's happening behind closed doors and what's happening in training. And as we're speaking yeah. here, we don't know either. We're just, you know, we're thinking of, you know, this is what we think may or may not. May not transpire on Saturday evening. Yeah. Would I be surprised if Rain O'Neill plays? No, he wouldn't be. He, oh, wouldn't, be yeah. one, he wouldn't be one bit. Um, yeah. But I just think, like genuinely, when it comes down to the matchups, and you talk about Grugan and Turbot oh. and and Mernon and the, and these guys and Stephen Campbell and, yeah. you know, for me, Charlotte O'Burns is the start. It probably in the middle of the field. Who picks him? Probably I'd love to see James the Miller on him. I think that'd be an outrageous battle. Right. Um, okay. 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 Um, but it, it comes down to matchups. But I, I genuinely think when you when you name out their strengths, that's up that top end of the field. Cavan has them covered. Whichever way the guys decide to pick them up or match them up, I think Cavan will have them covered. Okay. And the thing okay. about matchups, yeah. the thing about matchups is if you've got five key matchups in the game. Uh-huh. And you and three out of your five work, the chances are you win. Yeah, yeah. Really interesting with that half back line. Obviously, Kieran Brady, like for the league final, it was Kieran Brady, Darren Feely, and Jared Smith. Jerry or Tiernan, Mr. Milanov? I'd have Tiernan. I still okay. have Jerry on it. I still have Jerry. I still have Jerry up in that half forward line coming instead back of, and working uh, instead and, of and helping out. Well, like. He has to try and fit in. I would probably say probably Johnny McCabe may, may lose out there. Okay, okay. 
Um, Johnny has done nothing wrong. I think he's had an excellent league campaign. He has, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, very committed. I, I, I think his horses for courses. I think it's okay. Jerry's hugely experienced yeah. um, campaigner. You know what you're going to get from him. Yeah. Um, he'll work back. He'll do all the things. And if you are going to leave Garod and you are going to leave Paddy, for me, that's yeah. what I'd do. Yeah. Um, in close to goal, then you're going to need everybody else working further out the field. So, um, for me, Jerry Smith plays there somewhere, so, somewhere there, and he's he's back helping out. Yeah, do you, do you feel this is the the, the kind of game for Keane Madden? Yeah, Keane Keane is Keane is no different to Darren McVitie in the sense that rarely will you see Keane Madden making a, a poor decision. I think Keane's game has has come on immensely also. Okay. Um, over the last couple of years, he's gaining more and more confidence. He's as honest as the day is long. You know what you're going to get from him. Um, and and I don't think I certainly don't think that our and our and our mad defender is going to bully him. Yeah. Um, I think he'd I think he'd be well in for it. And Keen has that. We have to think about it. Is and this is just me speaking. If if I'm keeping Garob McKernan and Patrick Lynch close to the goal, I'm going to make sure that there's ball going into him. There's not too many better passers of the ball than Keen Madden out there. Yeah. He will, you know, it doesn't matter how many numbers is is back there. He has the ability to spread the ball around the place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I suppose what players? I suppose it's it, it's probably goes without saying. I suppose what players are you hoping from a Cavan end of thing that lead us to victory? Look, at it, I mean, I think you get. I think it, it. You're going to get a performance down down the spine of your of your team. I think you're going to get a consistent kicking game from Raymond Galligan. Hopefully he can tag on three or four, five, six points maybe. Six yeah. maybe too much. Um, Corey Faulkner, number three. McVitie, the middle of the field. Again, it's it's who they put in there. Um, I just think that, I, I, I think your defence is going to give you a real impetus going forward. Um, and once we can put the ball onto our boot and show yeah. that we can do that and put the ball into into the guys inside, I think we'll cause them all sorts of problems. And I do, I do believe that a two or three point is a huge lead in this game. 25 past six, Keelan, Saturday. Um, we see a number 26 number on Mr. Reid O'Neill's jersey. Who is the Cav man that's going to be picking that man up? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> see, I don't think Cavan will struggle too much in that where... The, the obvious thing would say, well, Killian Clark is going to go on him because Rian would like to come out the field and go back in and come in and out and Killian be able to follow him. Killian has shown that he's able to do them roles and, and, to, and to, 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 to nullify a threat like that. I believe Turbot will stay closer to goal. Mm-hmm. So I believe Park Faulkner will probably take him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's pie in the sky stuff. You don't know if... if, if uh, if he if he'll appear, but you can be sure Mickey Graham has a has a plan for him, and you're only spitballing and guessing, you know. But I do think that I don't. I would say if, if it was me, I'd certainly send somebody like that, like Killian, on him. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't use the word spoiler, but uh, you know I do think that he would he do a reasonably good job on him. Yeah. I suppose, Keelan, like, what's your maybe thoughts on, uh, like, uh, from the Armand and things, what's your thoughts on, like, a lot of people kind of say in every score they get, like, you see a lot of pundits are kind of saying it seems to just be hardship and it just seems to be work and work and work. Like, it doesn't look like it's overly enjoyable football, but maybe sometimes get some results. Like, from an Armand and things, like, it's it's not maybe in overly enjoyable, but sometimes get some results. It does, yeah. I, I can imagine that for the likes of, you know... Turbot and Mernon and Grugan and Rain O'Neill and, and these guys that it's it's boring, you know, for a forward and it's quite, you know, labour intensive for them to even get space to to get their shot off. Um for me it inhibits them a little bit. Um you know, for them to go back to I don't know why change what they were doing. Um yeah, yeah. I don't know why it's so slow and so methodical, whether it's a case of, well, if we've possession, the opposition can't score and they seem to be happy enough to get involved in them sort of kind of dog fights. Um but like that, like that being said, as I said, if Cavan goes two points up on them, they're gonna to have to speed up because the clock is they're not just playing Cavan then, they're playing the clock. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I do believe if they carry slow ball into that half back line, you know, the Bash brothers, as I call them there, they'll smash them up. They'll smash yeah. them up and they'll yeah. turn them over. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously we'll be seeing obviously Killian Kill- the Gunner Parade he come- coming back for Cavan this year as well. Got his 100 cap-, cap recently. Like, is this yeah. the kind of game you might see see the Gunner feature, or, or what are you thinking? Um, I'd be surprised. Okay. I'd be surprised. Um, that's not to say I I do believe uh Carolyn's going to I do believe Carolyn's going to play. Um, I believe Jason McLaughlin will play. I believe yeah. Parry Faulkner will play. Yeah. I believe. Like Vitty's going to play, Kieran de Hall is going to play, I think Tiernan is going to play. Okay. You know, you're running out of spaces on the field. We can only put out fifteen. Um, there's no doubt about it. Look at if 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 there's time, if there's ten minutes and it's the melting pot, and you're two or three points up and you want to close it down. Yeah. You know, Killian Brady slot him in there and he'll cover space and he'll he'll do what he needs to do. But, um. I certainly, if it was me, I, I wouldn't be sending him. I wouldn't be sending him in. Uh, certainly ahead of young Carlin, I think he is. He's outstanding. I think he is. A, yeah. I think he is a Rolls Royce, and I think he's a future. I think he's a future full back man. I think he's. I think. He, I think he's great. Yeah, it is obviously great to see Niall Carlin in about the camp, camp panel. Obviously, rich tradition. Obviously, his his uncle Ronan needs very little introduction, or like no. we know how much of a legend he is. But like. It's it's uh, the Carlin name is steeped in Cavan football, Mister Milanov. Yeah, no, it is, it is, and by all accounts, he's a fierce, good fella. He's coachable, and but when it comes to training and stuff like that, there's not too many forwards lining up to go in and take him on because uh, okay. one forward told me he's the lad that gets you dropped very quickly. <laughs> so that's a that's a, that's a, as high a compliment as as uh, you could get uh, as a yeah. as a cornerback. Take a trust of it, Mr. Milanov. Um, if this for mana, I suppose, wall of defence and everything come, kind of comes up against it, and I suppose we're watching on from the stands or the terrace, suppose, like, from a fan end of things, it's like, what are you hoping Cavan do to, I suppose, break all this stuff down? Well, I don't think that they'll panic um, because okay. it'll, they'll be facing something that, you know, they've faced quite a bit. Um, if it does come that, I think Cavan can play it both ways. You know they can take their time. I think they're they're I think they're well set up. Um, I think Burke has done a, a great job with them. Yeah. So with that, uh, I think they'll 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 take their time, and when they get their chance, it all depends on keep it, keeping the key men close to goal. Uh-huh. Um, especially in them type of games, if if you've got a wall in front of you and you don't have somebody lengthening the field as much as you can, playing from the end line out. Yeah. Um, and getting good ball players coming off the shoulder at pace. Um, again, all you're looking for is for Cavan to be able to penetrate there and drive at that D. And then I fancy Arma to foul. They won't want to give away goals. And yeah. we have free takers in close to goal, and we have free takers out further out the field. And um, you know it could come down to the place kicking. It could well come down to the place kicking on the day. Quite like you know, obviously 2016 that time. Obviously, Garrod and Shawnee were well, Garrod was on, on the 40, and Shawnee was inside. I think it was a David Givney or Michael Argue was up top, and Johnson was just feeding feeding off the two lads every time. And we were getting a lot of uh, reward from it. I know the game has probably changed a good bit since 2016, but mm. it could be worth a shout. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I there are a handful. There are a handful of like um, Paddy Lynch, Paddy Lynch. While I'm complimenting other lads for for their improvement down to the years. Paddy Lynch, you know his his size, his his strength, um, his his uh, skill skill set has improved drastically as well. Like he's a real handful. Like the last thing, you know, if you're the Armagh full back line and you see Garou coming into you and Paddy Lynch, you might have your match up for McGinney. But the last thing you want to do is be seeing, you know, McGinney will be banking on, you know, probably Garou playing further out the field that he can just put somebody to to run after him, but. It's a different story if Garoud is in closer to the goal. Yeah, yeah, you're just kind of hoping. Obviously, I suppose like, that's that's what you are hoping for. Like on, on Saturday, like it's just you know throw. I wouldn't say you know throw the kitchen sink at it, but like put Garoud in maybe full forward for the first while or all game or like what are you thinking? Or yeah, well look at the, you know the beauty about having having players like that at your disposal. You, you know any one player can go in there. You've seen Jane Smith can go in there and play too. Yeah. So um, anybody can 
go in there and that's that's proven ball winners. Um, but I, I just think if 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 Cavan can play quick ball and coming out, there's no issue with Garrod and Paddy Lynch and whoever else interchanging inside. But I just think having the two of them in there, having having the two of them in there, you're giving our man an outrageous amount to think about. Um, yeah. By that, they're not going to just go man on man. They're going to leave a couple of bodies back there. And that'll allow this half back line, this half back line of ours to come up the field and uh, to penetrate them and cause them problems. Because the last thing you're going to do, what, what do you do if, if, if Kieran the Holler or Darren McVitie is running at you? Yeah. Are you going to be shadowing Garrod or Paddy Lynch or are you going to go out and meet them? You're going to go out and probably try and meet them. Maybe foul them. You're going to try and cut out a goal, a goal chance, and you know I think Cavan, Cavan will have a plan up their up their sleeve to unlock whatever bodies Armagh has in front of them. As I said from the onset, I believe that Cavan's defenders are superior than the Armagh defenders, and Armagh defenders will be sleeping very uneasy over the next couple of nights. I'd imagine. Oh, the excitement's building, Mister Milano. The excitement yeah. is absolutely building. Um, what are we thinking? Are we going to get over the line? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, the closer, the closer we get to it, I believe Cavan is going to win by by two or three points. Okay. Um, you know, as you said, I think all the pressure is on Armagh. Um, very little pressure on Cavan. Someone said to me, "What Cavan team is going to show up?" Yeah. Um, I think you're going to see a Cavan team that's going to relish the challenge, and it yeah. is going to be a challenge. Yeah. They're going to be supported heavily Cavan is going to have a huge support uh, hopefully it's a good evening and everybody's in high spirits um so i, I fancy Cavan Cavan support to get behind the team and and uh, i think you're going to see a Cavan win by maybe two or three points i take a point but i think two or three points Take a point on a point. Yeah, Brefley Park this Saturday, half six, Ulster Senior Football Championship against Romano. We cannot wait for it. Last thing before we jump, uh, Caelan, I just have to get your thoughts, obviously, on the Cavan ladies' fallout uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think I'm presuming there is talks on going to get that situation sorted, but a bit of a mess. Yeah, yeah. Um, very disappointing. Um, I know this, you know, there's two sides to every story and all these things, but just disappointing that has come to that, you know, as a as a father who has a has a child who aspires to play for Cavan and someday down the line, if she's lucky to uh, to do that, um, just find it very hard in this day and age that that you know a group of players you know have to have to it has to come to that that they don't get the basics needs looked after. Um, uh, so I just hope they can get their house in order. I know it was a different regime and. You know, whatever was agreed might have been with that executive, but I just think it's it's um, I think it's disappointing. I don't, I don't think it it sheds uh, the county in a great light uh, mm-hmm. from from a management point of view, from from the organisational point of view. Not certainly not from the players. Fair play to the players because um, it wasn't easy on them. Because I know, you know, a, few, a lot of them girls all they want to do is represent their county and make their family and friends proud. Um, and regardless what happens down the line, I think they've done that. I think they've they've done something really, really positive in in um, you know setting the standard. And you know if they if they if they get the result at the end, that hopefully our teams down the line that this is going to be a given that this if if we're expecting girls to put, because girls ladies put in put put in every bit as much of effort yeah. and more because it's one thing that. I'd certainly see here, and you asked me from the beginning about, you know, uh, maybe what, what have I seen from the very beginning or, you know, from this year as opposed mm-hmm. to last year. Mm-hmm. It's extremely hard. Uh, and I know I'm speaking where there might be too many of the Cavan senior ladies that has children and stuff like that, but they still have other responsibilities of college and work. It's very hard to get the time to be able to go to training. to, to And we're talking at club level. You yeah. know, th- these girls are putting in a huge effort to represent Cavan, and it was just very disappointing, to be totally honest with you. And and you know, hopefully, hopefully there can be a positive outcome out of it. And and down the line, that we're talking about Cavan ladies, um, you know, being successful on the field. But you know, they're never going to be successful on the field if they're not if they're not supported from the from from the top down. 
Yeah, like it's, 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 I suppose such basic stuff as well, Keelan. Like we're, we're just talking about gear, we're talking about just expenses and just getting down the road to train. And we all, like, of course, the ladies are one hundred and ten percent putting in the same amount of effort as men's are. Like, make no doubt about it. It's, it's basic wants and needs that should definitely, definitely be fulfilled. Definitely, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. It's, 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 it's so silly. Like it is, it is the basics. Um, it's stuff that's it's a given. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, um, you know, what was set out from the onset and what was agreed, hopefully that can be followed through and um, the girls can can start focusing on, on, on preparing for a championship and um, putting their best foot forward. I'm sure it has been disruptive for them and I'm sure it hasn't been easy for them. And I commend them on, on coming out and speaking as well with their management team because um, They've they've shown and there is a real backing behind them as well. And there's a real from the general public. There's Uh a huge, huge, um, huge backing. And I know if they if they decided to run a fundraiser at the weekend, I know it'd be it'd be huge. Yeah. Is it a tad bit unsettling that there's been maybe a good bit of silence since it or do you genuinely think there's, you know, talks and discussions around it? I'd like to think that there is. Okay. I'd like to think that there is, and that there's okay. maybe maybe a thing that look at. Let's sit down and let's talk, but let's let's not air maybe the dirty laundry out uh, out for the whole public to hear. Um, I'd imagine it's it's. Uh, I would like to think. I certainly hope so that both parties are are sitting down and they're trying to trying to resolve the issue. But again, I will say again, I commend them. I commend them on on coming out and speaking out about it. It's just hugely an unfortunate situation that. That's what it came to. Yeah, yeah. Well said, Keelan. Well said. And hopefully everyone can give the cab, keep giving the cabin ladies back and they absolutely deserve because no doubt they're putting in the exact same amount of effort as the lads. And it's basic human rights and needs and they absolutely deserve it. Keelan Milanoff, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by yourgrets.com. You can go to Mac podcast to get 15% off on their website. Enjoy Saturday, man. Up, cab. I intend to. God bless.